Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorial. So far, I made videos to show you how to analyze single cell DNA sequencing data and also single cell RNA sequencing data. Now I'm going to make videos to show you how to analyze single cell proteomics data. Compared to single cell RNA sequencing data analysis, single cell proteomics technique is in the early stage for both data acquisition and also data processing and analysis. There are some packages that you can use to analyze single cell proteomics data, but at the moment I think the SCP package is the best one that we could use to analyze the proteomics data. So for the SCP data structure, SCP relies on the single cell experiment and also the key feature objects to save different SCP data slots. So we can divide the data processing and the analysis as three steps. First is process the PSM data. PSM stands for the peptide to spectrum match. Then aggregate the PMS data to peptide data. Then process the peptide data and aggregate peptide data to protein data. Finally, we can perform data normalization run PCA cluster cells for the protein data. If you want to understand the details for the SCP package, it is important that you spend some time to read the online tutorial. You can see SCP workflow can be applied to any mass spectrometry based data. For you to prepare data for SCP analysis, so the online tutorial lists the minimum requirement information for the SCP workflow. So the data should contain the raw files and the channel information and also the sample type because this is at the early stage of single cell proteomics data analysis. The sample type actually contains the cell type information. I think through the package development, one day we can actually use the package to analyze and identify the cell types like we did for the single cell mRNA data analysis. So the data also should contain the information about the, the quality of the single cell proteomics data, for example, the potential contamination and the reverse peptide, and also the spectral purity. The PEP and the dot PEP it provides the peptide posterior error probability information and we need the modified sequence information to aggregate PSM data into peptide data. And we need the leading razor protein information to aggregate peptide data into protein data. And finally, for the data information, we need the columns for the report intensity for the data we are going to use for this video tutorial, the report intensity has 16 channels. So I only did a very short introduction here. And the, the online tutorial contains all the details. If you are going to analyze your single cell proteomics data, you should read this online tutorial in details. So now we can go to our studio and show you how to note the packages and also how to note the single cell proteomics data set. 
So first you need to install the SCP package. For the video tutorial, we are going to use the simplified data set. And then this data set was included in the SCP package. If you want to use the full data set, you also need to install the, the package SCP data. At the moment, the SCP data package contains 18 single cell proteomics data set. I will show you how to look at the 18 data set in this package. So I installed the SCP and the SCP data already. So let's just load the package SCP then SCP data. Because we loaded the SCP data already, let's see how many data set in the SCP data set. So you can see we have 18 rows. So that means we have 18 data set in the SCP data. And each data set has 15 columns to show the data information. So we can use the first and the, the second column information to know the data. So you can see the second column contains the title of the data information for the EH3899 is the Spatchy 2019 data set. 3900 is the latest version, V3 version. So we are going to use the Spatchy 2019 V3 data set as an example to show you how to load the data from SCP data package. So we can use the question mark together the title for the data set to look at the information for each data set. Let's run the Spatchy 2019 V3 data set. You can see here is the information about this data set that we are going to use for our video tutorial. So we can load this data set as the SCP. This is the full data set. Okay, you can see we directly loaded the Spatchy 2019 V3 data set into our studio. And uh, it is a large Q features data set. So I show you how to use the data title to know the, the data from the SCP data package. So now it's another way using the experiment hub interface to know the data set. So to use the experimental hub interface, so first you need to set up a collection with the experiment hub. So you can see we have a link as the EH for the experimental hub. And also we can use the link to see how many data set are available in the SCP data package. So you can see from the link, we can see the object name and also the title for each data set. Because we are going to use the spectral 2019 V3 data set. So we can use the link and the object name EH3900 to load the data set as SCP. So we loaded the, the data set already, so we don't need to run this code here anymore. So to analyze single cell proteomics data, we also need to load the package for the single cell experiment, Q features, and also we load the tidyverse and the patchwork to manipulate the data and also realize the data set. So we loaded the full data set already. So first, then, let's have a look at this full data set. So we can use the plot function to see each single cell experiment inside the SCP data set. So let's run the plot SCP function. 
you can see we generate a plot. Let's zoom in. From the data windows, we already know there are 179 single cell experiment data in this data set. Because we have so many single cell experiments inside the data set, it's very hard to see the individual data set. And also the, for the full data set, and they aggregate the PSM data into peptide, then aggregate the peptide data into protein data. So we have 100 uh, and the 79 single cell experiment data here, we can just run the SCP to see the name of each single experiment. Let's run SCP. You can see here is the list from 1 to 179. So you can see the information for each PSM data inside the Q features from 1 to 179. So you can see from here, from 1 to 177 are PSM data set. 178 is the peptide data set and also 179 is the protein data set. So this is because they aggregate the PSM data into peptide data and also aggregate the peptide data into protein data. So if you want to analyze the full data set, you need to subset the data, only keep the PSM data set for the analysis. Let's subset the data. You can see now we only have 177 element in the SCP data set. We can run the SCP again to see the information. You can see now we only have 1 to 177. We don't have the peptide and the protein data set anymore. So because we have 177 data set inside the full data set, it will take a long time to run the analysis, so it is not good to use the full data set to make the video tutorial. And also you can see for the um, plot function, we cannot see individual data set from the figure. So for the online tutorial, they actually subset uh, four data set from the full data set to run the analysis. So for my video tutorial, I'm going to use the simplified data set for the demonstration. So let's clear the full data set from here. Then we can load the simplified data set. And they named the MQ SCP data. So we just load the simplified data set. You can see now it here has 1361 observations with 149 variables. We can have a look at the column names for this data set. So you can see the column names for 149 columns. So I showed you for SCP data analysis, we actually don't need to use all the information here. The minimum Information will be the raw files. This is inside the one of the column. You can see raw files is here. And we need the reverse column, potential contaminant column, the PIF column, PP or dot PP column. And also we need the column information, modified sequence to aggregate PSM data into peptide data. And we need the leading reader protein column to aggregate peptide data into protein data. And also we need the report intensity for each samples. 
Again, you can use the question mark plus the data title to look at the data information. So here is the description that uh, they simplify the data set for the SCP package demonstration. So we can subset the minimum information from the data set to have a look at the column information. So we subset it as MKSCP data set one. We can click the data set. You can see the first column is the raw files name. Then we have the reverse and the potential contaminant column. If they are labeled as plus, that means this data has very low quality. Later we need to fill out no quality samples. We have the PIF column to show the spectral purity. We have the PP or dot PP column to provide the information for the peptide posterior error probabilities. And also we have the modified sequence information and the leading region protein information. So here in the data set, we don't have the information about the, the channels and also the sample type. So they also prepare the sample annotation data set. Then we can load the next data set. If we connect the sample annotation data set, you can see we have the raw files here. We also have the channel information. We have the sample type. So now, from both data set, we have all the information to analyze the single cell proteomics data set. So we can use the table function to have a look the sample type for this data set. You can see here we have 19 blank. So the blank channels are the negative control channels. Those channels don't have any cells, but uh, were processed for the analysis. Then we have the carrier channels. So the each carrier channel contains uh, 200 cells. Because they have so much cells there, so the carrier channels are designed to boost uh, the peptide identification rate. During the data acquisition, we have 20 channels for the macrophages, 5 channels for the model site. We also have 3 reference channels. So each reference channel contains 5 cells. So we can use the reference channels to correct the, the variation between different uh, experiments. And there are 14 I use the channels. So now we can use the MQSCP data as the feature data and the column data as sample annotation. We have the channel information from the sample annotation data and also the batch column will be the raw files. Then we can create a simplified SCP data set. So let's have a look at the simplified SCP data set. You can see we only have four PSCM data in the simplified SCP data set. And the, in the data windows, you can see it is the four elements. Now we can plot the SCP to have a look at each PSM data set. So let's zoom in. Now you can see the name of each PSM data set. So okay, this is the first uh, video for single cell proteomics data analysis. In my next video, I will show you how to process PSM data set and also aggregate the PSM data set into a peptide data set. I'm going to stop from here. Please subscribe my channel if you are new to my channel and also share my videos with your friends. 
Thank you and I hope to see you in my second video tutorial.